whatever. This episode of the Retail List Podcast is brought to you by e-commerce center of Hampton. E-commerce center of Hampton offers high security, small business, workplace, office spaces, and temperature controlled storage units of all sizes at reasonable rates and flexible lease terms. The on-site EPS store provides printing, order fulfillment, and shipping. All under one roof with lots of free parking, easy access to interstates, bridge tunnels, and local airport. They're also close to shops, restaurants, hotels, and more. You can learn more at ecommercehampton.com. Okay. <laughs> Our guests today are Ronald and Sarah uh, Morton <laughs> of Lock Green. Welcome, guys. Thanks for being on the show. Okay. Thank, Thank you for that. having us. Thank you for having us. Yes. That was a great start, Joey. So, <laughs> yeah. well, they won't, they don't need to say that because the people won't know that I ever messed up like that because we're going to edit that part out. <laughs> There you go. There you go. <laughs> Cut that right out and uh, move on. Um, but yeah, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what Lockering is? Go ahead, yeah. Kaya. Oh, so, um, so my name is Sarah Kaya Morton. Um, I am the co-owner of Lock Green along with my husband, Ron Morton. Um, and we have started Lock Green to address... Um, the the gray area in the law, the the new cannabis laws. Um, when it comes to driving in Virginia, the law is very specific about if you have cannabis in your car, it needs to be in your trunk outside of the passenger area. Um, but it also says that it needs to be transported in this originally sealed manufacturer's container. And that doesn't exist right now the way that the uh, the the market is it just doesn't exist so what we did was what community advocacy groups have been pushing for years even back when virginia just had medicinal um cannabis legal the the um the advice was always to lock it up um lock it up in some kind of lock box and make sure that it's in your trunk so we have created our own stash box we didn't invent stash boxes but what we did is we designed our own version of a stash box um, and I'll, and then put a commemorative design on the front of it to celebrate Virginia being the first state in the South to legalize adult use cannabis. That's that's huge. That's huge. So we didn't want this moment to go past without celebrating that. And we were able to take that and also mix it in with us uh, being able to affect the community by educating about what the laws are and promoting um, the community to do the right thing by following the laws and locking up their cannabis and putting it in their trunk when they travel. So that's a little high level about who we are. Um, Ron, Ron can speak a little bit to this if he likes, but Ron has been involved in the cannabis industry for over 10 years across three different states. I have been involved um, in the cannabis industry in Virginia as far as ac- as far as advocacy. Sorry, I was tongue twisted a bit on that. Um, and really um, being staying, staying in tune with the law changes where I sit on the board of Virginia Normal. Normal is the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws. And I've been on that board since about 2017. Um, so for several years, I've been involved in this and my husband even longer. So we're not new to this industry and this concept. And we're so happy to be able to have a business in this space and be able to affect our community positively in this space as well. Did you always want to have a business or were you happy at the time to advocate and be involved in sort of promoting, you know, the benefits of it? Or did you happen to just fall into this or you saw it and went, oh, this is a business opportunity? Like, did you sort of put your entrepreneurial hat on and go, oh, hang on, there's a market here? Or was it more, uh, you know, the different reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, we we always wanted to have a business in Virginia in cannabis. Now, if we would have projected it would happen in 2021, I wouldn't have. <laughs> but we knew that it was going to be coming. And of course, that was always on our radar. But when we saw that it was coming for 2021, um, you know, it was it was an idea that when Governor Northam signed the law to start um, the legalization to happen in 2021, we at that point moved very quickly and turned an idea into reality. We we knew that this was a historic moment and we needed to commemorate that moment. And we also knew that there was a gray area in the law. And what better time to talk about that and make people aware of it than when the law started, which was on July 1. 
So that's how everything happened and it happened very quickly. And there was a business opportunity that came along with it that I think mm -hmm. organically spawned. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of what I talk about, even with Sarah and just being so involved with the community, uh, it, that's, that's really a large part of what this, uh, you know, this industry is. It's very communal and how you approach it and how you want to protect it, you know, obviously with, uh, you know, the end user patients and consumers, um, I think that's, that it's a perfect way for us to, to give back and for essentially everybody to win, you know, it's a win, win thing all around. Um, so yeah. Yep. So Ronald, you, um, now you, well, that was mentioned that you were in a couple of different states and involved in this industry. What, what, what were you doing with that? Uh, so it, it, essentially, you know, when I originally went out to Denver to work in that market and, you know, I always had a belief again of what cannabis was the culture but also just the, uh, the you know the health benefits of it and that you know that was just one calling that i had that i felt that i needed to do um you know obviously to support my family and having that you know acumen that business acumen and desire to to have a business within uh the space in whatever capacity but you know starting out in denver and working my way back across uh you know back into the maryland market and and obviously here uh, in the Virginia market, I've been fortunate enough to work in different capacities, you know, whether it's retail, uh, cultivation and processing. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to kind of have a nice, well-rounded uh, experience throughout the industry, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so so you guys... Most of that time he was in uh, Denver, okay. he was coming back and forth. We were based in Virginia. <laughs> we were based in Virginia yeah. for that time. So that's how we really have been staying really close to it as Ron was working in Denver and then coming back. And then we actually moved to Maryland for a couple of years and then came back to Virginia when this market picked up. So it's been a ride and we've there learned you go. a yeah, lot. All over the place. Are you guys originally from Virginia? I'm originally from Cincinnati, well, Ohio. Okay. And, yep. and Ron's and from New Jersey. And uh, we're Jersey, yeah. wearing an Oakland hat. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, right. Oakland, I got Las Vegas now, I guess. <laughs> right. Right. I actually got into it by way of, uh, you know, I've, I played football uh, for a large portion of my life and just growing up and watching, uh, you know, I've obviously watched the NFC, but I've watched the Raiders uh, mm -hmm. closely. And that was just, you know, who I naturally, the, the organization where I gravitated toward, you know? Oh, I love the Raiders still. I'm a Rams fan, but the Raiders were always a team that I like to watch. Oh, man. Rams are looking good this year, they too. They are. Man. We can yeah. talk all, we can just. Take over this podcast with that stuff. I thought we could take you get back on <laughs> sports uh, sports podcast, but yeah, man, for sure. <laughs> so, um, the thing that I found interesting when I was reading about you guys is that you opened your business the same day that uh, uh, he legalized it, Governor Northam. So, yes. it sounds like that you had planned on this like happening, like you guys were aware of this. How did you become aware of this sort of gap in the law, and what drifted you towards this thing? Because you said you wanted to open a business in this field. What drifted you towards the uh, lockbox idea? So we are always staying in tune with the law changes, especially in Virginia, because that, you know, although we're from different places, Virginia has been our home base for, for years and years. Um, so we saw, you know, when the legis when the General Assembly meets in the beginning of the year, we saw that those changes were happening. We heard that Governor Northam was thinking about moving up the date because the initial date that was agreed upon was uh, January 1st, 2024 for legalization. You know, a lot of these things that that happened on July 1st. Um, so we knew that there was were uh, um, conversations about him moving it up. And then we got the official word, Governor Northam is going to sign um, the legalization, the legislation for um, for adult use legalization on July 1st. So we knew it was happening. We saw it. We watched it. But when it actually happened, that's when we jumped on it. Um, so, yes, we we in very intentionally announced our business on July 1st, very mm -hmm. intentionally. Um, and as far as a business and this really being our first time being entrepreneurs, I've worked in corporate America for over 15 years um, and had a great run there and did very well. Um, but this was our first attempt at entrepreneurship. It was a huge learning curve. I mean, from 
from April 21st, which is when Governor Northam um, signed the legalization saying that saying that marijuana was going to be legal July 1st, 2021. We had from April 21st to July 1 to source product, design product, figure out how to get it done. I mean, all kinds of things. Um, and it was challenging because of that timeline, mm -hmm. but it was also exciting because of that timeline. Um, okay. And I, my vision was very clear. July 1 was going to be that date. So we ended up making it happen. We ended up introducing everything um, on July 1st. Our uh, sales for the stash boxes, the limited edition stash boxes, started on July 10th, which coincided with a marijuana holiday called 710 Oil Day. Um, so we did that very intentionally. Um, and then things have been just flying by since then, thankfully. So do you actually have the product manufactured in Virginia or do you source it somewhere else and ship it directly? Do you have inventory here? Yeah, well, um, we do not sh um, uh, manufacture it in Virginia. That was a part of the, that huge learning curve I was saying. I, you know, I, I would have loved to do that, but we don't. We source it um, from elsewhere. We have inventory here in Virginia. We designed it in Virginia. We have our inventory here in Virginia. And of course, it celebrates Virginia. Our first, our first line is a limited edition celebrating Virginia specifically. Um, so that's how, that's how we ended up making it happen. I would have loved to do everything, mm -hmm. source everything from here, but just couldn't well, make it happen. <laughs> I would say too, but that's a part of the goal, you know, being able to create a business that is, you know, for lack of better words, fully self-sufficient, you know, and we're using local other businesses, um, mm -hmm. you know, just to, again, spread that communal sense of, um, you know, being a part of this market. That's what it's about. So, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yep. I'm always fascinated with new business owners. Like, how did you guys learn this? Was it just did somebody help you? Was it just frantic Google searches on the internet, or what? How do you guys manage <laughs> that? I, I can tell you, Sarah has put a tremendous amount of effort and work into this business to you know bring it to where it is now. Um, you know, I think you know we've been very fortunate to have a lot of professionals, uh, professional influences, mentors. Uh, you know, again, we're UVA graduates. We, you know, we have a good head on our shoulders and understanding, you know, the things that we lack, where can we find them or, or how to do something. If we, you know, if you really want to figure out how to do something, you'll, you'll put that, that effort into, to figuring it out. And, you know, the things that you don't know, you need to figure the people who do know them. So, um, you know, just assembling that idea and just, you know, using the best tools that we have at our disposal is, is, is key. Okay. And, and look at here in Hampton Roads in particular, is who have you sort of tapped into to help you and answer those questions and, and sort of be that mentor? Well, um, I you know, Joey joked about it, but Google isn't necessarily a mentor, okay. but that's really a source of a lot of information when you're just starting your, your research process. Um, we have, um, there are a couple business leaders that we tapped into just to say, hey, I need to figure out how to manufacture. Who should I talk to? Give me to some, you know, could you please consult me? I mean, uh, please refer right, me right. to someone else. Right. Um, we also had, you know, some help and guidance, just trying to figure, just trying to figure out, you know, who to be connected to with partners. You know, we needed someone to build our website. We needed someone to take our pictures. We needed someone to do our videos. So we tapped into some folks and just get referrals that way, um, which was really helpful as well. Um, we also have family members that are business owners and small entrepreneur. I mean, for small businesses and medium sized businesses, they were phenomenal, even when it comes to things, like, you know, like shipping. <laughs> I said, how do you do shipping again? You know, how do we do this? Like, How do I find the boxes? Well, how do I know how much it's going to cost? You know, things like that, the little details. Um, people who have done it before i'm i'm calling them on the phone and, and i don't hesitate to do that <laughs> as ron said when we need information we've built for all those years that i was in corporate america i have built some phenomenal partnerships phenomenal relationships with business leaders across hampton roads um i help them they help me so when we had these questions same thing with ron he has phenomenal partnerships so when we had these questions, I didn't hesitate reaching out to our network 
um, to get some guidance. Um, and it really is a almost a trial and error sometimes, just trying to figure it out. But um, definitely learning a lot along the way, for sure. Oh, yeah. we're, we're definitely learning a lot along the way. Um, you know, again, being very fortunate to have family members who have, you know, they've started their their business from the ground up. You know, so a lot of the questions we can always figure out, you know, technical questions about doing things like shipping and things like that. But there's those there's the intangibles and in, in the experience that you go through as a business owner to say, hey, you know, I'm I, you know, I'm doing this or how should I go about this? And, you know, it's just a lot to learn that doesn't that, that's not so much quantifiable. Right. You know, mm-hmm. there's you, you know, you want to tap into like Sarah said, you know, she has a lot of strong relations in the corporate world. So they're, they're def- once you branch out on your own they're more than willing to help you and, and that's been the uh the same case for myself well that's good i'm glad that there's been that support for you guys i have a question um and i don't want to get too political but what would happen if the law ever changed to to did, will, will it ever be able to be rolled back this yeah i don't i don't I don't foresee that that would be that would almost be like uh, prohibition. We would bring pro- mm-hmm. prohibition back. Once you've opened Pandora's box, there's no going back. And even for the sake of the health benefit, once you legalize something for a medical reason, how would you ever roll that back or now go back on, you know, why it's here? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, especially something that has, a me- again, a medical benefit to it. Why? What would be the reason? Yeah. Oh yeah, and the thing that they would probably mess with would be the legal, the recreational side. Or in Virginia, it's not called recreational; it's called adult use um, for those outside of the medical program. Um, right. And that's that's what they would, they meaning whoever is against legalization, may try to tweak mess that with a bit. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. I can't say that I know um, how to answer your question. Um, well, yes, I would say, I would say I would, fat. yeah, I would say the closest way to answer that and particularly from my experience, you know, being in, for example, in Denver and being in certain counties originally when marijuana was first, um, you know, legalized for medicinal use, mm-hmm. uh, you know, there were certain counties that didn't want to have uh, dispensaries within them over time. And as the culture changes and obviously as they don't receive those tax benefits from having you know, you know, cannabis within their, their uh, county, they come around and they start to see that there's there's more to it than just actual flower and, and other things that are uh, directly co- connected with the plant, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing is, too, there are a lot of parts of that law that were signed into law with the legalization, but there's also a lot of pieces that are on reenactment that we'll see when the General Assembly meets again in January, we'll see where those go. And I believe a lot of those have to do with what the market will look like. Right now, it's slated that a legal market, meaning if Ron and I have a business, if ABC company down the road has a business that can legally sell marijuana to anybody who wants to buy it. Right now, patients can buy it. That's good. But if anyone that's not a patient wants to purchase it, the the law the way it is right now or what it's planning to be is 2024 is the date when those businesses can become operational um so if anything is happening there for people to push back any advancement i believe it would be in those ways they would try to mess with those different factors of of what has already been planned. But I think we're so far to Ryan's point too. I think we're so far on the advance with mm-hmm. this. Um, it'll have to be some pretty determined lawmakers um, to push it back without huge pushback. Okay. Huge pushback. Oh, I think we might have just lost. Oh, we lost. A, yeah, yeah, I'm sure he'll can pop second. right back in. So uh, yeah, I wanted to ask, um, you said that a big part of your business and what you do too is education. So what do you guys do with that? Yes. Yeah, so um, right now we do a lot of educating via our social media. We actually are in the process of creating like a series of educational videos. Okay. Um, you guys going to be in them? 
Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Awesome. I, I, you know, that social media, I'm in a lot of it. I try to get Ron. I wish he was on it. He'll pop back in. I'm sure. I try to get Ron in some of them and I'll, you know, grudgingly oh. get him <laughs> in <laughs> with me. Um, but you know, um, we have some other videos. We have some videos about our product. You know, I just filmed one about how to use the, the combination lock on our stash boxes because our stash boxes have a built-in lock mm -hmm. and that lock can be changed to whatever the combination is that you wanted. So I did a video for that, but, um, we're doing some videos to talk about the law specifically yesterday. I did a post, um, about the specific law, um, that, that, that addresses open container. So I did like, these are the terms you need to know. This is how it applies to you. You know, it was really, really educational. Um, um, but we're going to be doing more videos. Mm -hmm. We also do when we go to events. Um, I have boards that I've printed, which kind of goes over the laws, the high points of the law, um, and we talk about it. It's just talking. Wherever we go, we're talking about, did you know? And everybody knows that cannabis is legal now. Adult use cannabis is legal. But they don't know that you can't just throw it in your car and drive, you know, yeah. it's the same thing with a beer. You can't have an open beer and just drive your car and the police fools you over and it's going to be okay. Um, but they don't think that far, you know, and that's not to their fault. It's just that, you know, where's the education around this besides yeah. us talking to people, you know? So um, we go out and we talking about it. Whenever we go to events, I bring my boards, I talk about it. I bring my, um, the, the stash boxes with me. Um, and we also are looking to do more community partnerships. Um, so whether it's with uh, uh, community groups, um, we want to talk to even police departments, you know, get them on board. Yeah. They, you know, they are actually being educated on the laws as we are, you know. Yeah. Um, so we want to have partnerships with that um, just so we can have maybe even some like forums. And, and I've talked to people who've asked us to do things like that before. And, and I'm like, absolutely, absolutely. Let's get out and let's really um, be intentional about getting the word out about what the laws are now and as they change, continuing to educate. One thing that's really a driving factor for us, um, we are a black owned business and realistically, um, the war on drugs has been harsh on our community. Very harsh. I mean, the, there's a there's a statistic that's on our website um, that I wrote down here too, just so I can reference it. Um, but it is saying that um, it's nationwide, black people are 3.6 times more likely than white people to be arrested for marijuana, despite similar usage rates. So we know that there's folks that are getting these law violations for years and it impacts communities, it impacts jobs, it impacts where you can live, it impacts getting student loans, all these things because of a marijuana law violation. So what we want to do is we want to go out there and educate to prevent unnecessary marijuana law violations. Someone can be traveling with cannabis in their car and not even know that they're violating the law. Now they're in the system. Now they have a violation and the spiral happens yet again. So yeah. it's really our mission um, to uh, to impact that positively. And, you know, that, that's why education is so important. For us absolutely it's it's a it's a great uh it's a great mission yeah that's really mm -hmm. important stuff I, and i mean so you guys are also advocating too, doing a lot of that mm -hmm. would you ever be advocating to just make this law go away that it has to be in some original container would that be ever a goal uh no because oh. just like i said with the alcohol um the goal the the purpose of an open container law Mm -hmm. is because you because the cops the 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 community doesn't want folks drinking and driving right yeah or they don't want people smoking and driving it's to separate it's to, for safety okay. so you know um i don't think that part will ever go away you always need to lock it up and put it in your truck now what may be more clarified is right now it says um that if you travel with cannabis it needs to be in its originally sealed manufacturer's container if it's not in an originally sealed manufacturer's container it's considered an open container okay so technically everything is an open container right yeah. <laughs> according to the law the way it's written right now and there's a, a there's a ton of gray areas throughout all these yeah. laws by the way by the way this is just one this is just yeah. one that we are tackling <laughs> um 
But um, so so the closest thing to an originally sealed manufacturer's container is a locked container. Yeah. Because what you're trying to do is avoid the assumption that you are consuming while driving, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, which is called permissive inference. It's, it's in the law. That's what it's called. Permissive inference is the assumption that you are consuming while driving. So if you have your cannabis locked and in your trunk, if the cop pulls you over and for some reason finds out that you had cannabis, it'll be pretty hard um, to go in front of a judge and say, oh, this person was consuming marijuana while they were driving well how, how 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 was i consuming marijuana while driving it was in my trunk and it was locked up yeah so um that's really what we're trying to educate for we're not trying to say don't lock it up mm -hmm. what we're trying to say is well maybe establish an originally sealed manufacturer's container which will be when a legal market becomes open mm -hmm. you know you go to a dispensary anybody a patient or not can walk out and they will have an originally sealed manufacturer's container They'll, they'll be fine. Um, but, you know, I don't think that part will ever go away because of that. Um, you don't want to be consuming while driving. That's that, makes make, that makes sense. Um, well, we are running out of time. So, Kylie, do you have another question you want to ask? It looks like we didn't get Ronald back, but uh, I'm sure he's having problems because I know he comes. Yeah, yeah, he's that's doing, fine. We'll, we'll keep on. Technology, <laughs> it's, all, it's all tricky. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I don't know if you have a, a a sample of the lockbox there, but I, I saw that there's two sizes to it. Mm -hmm. And I just want to ask, like, for your future goals, are you going to extend the product line or venture into other sort of accessories or other, you know, products that are in the same sort of, you know, category? Yes, yes. Well, so as far as what our goals are with that, you know, our mission, um, uh oh, there he is. He's coming back in. Oh, you're on mute. Can you hear us? No, he's, he's muted. Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'm not sure why it disconnected, but I think I got it back on now. Sorry about that. No worries. Welcome back. <laughs> well, she was. She just asked about um, product. So, so our mission of our company is uh, to provide products that provide protection, promote safety, and support the values of responsible consumers. So I say that to say we're very, we're going to be very intentional about what we add to our product line. So we have some things in the works right now, which will be announced soon. Um, but we don't want to just be a stash box company that, you know, and just offer all these different accessories that everybody else is offering. We want to uh, be in a class of our own. So when we add products, which we are going to be adding some um, next month, um, they are going to be along those lines of being very intentional. What's safe travel? How can we promote responsibility? Um, taking care of what you have, things like that. Um, so we do look to add that way. Um, so so that's something that everyone can stay tuned about. I'm going to say next month will be November. <laughs> mm -hmm, right before the holiday. <laughs> so keep a look out. Yeah. Was there anything else, Ron, that you wanted to add? Because I know Joey was saying that we're going to be wrapping up. But um, um, I mean, I guess. <laughs> sorry again. Sorry for dip, uh, for dropping off. But I think just to touch on, you know, uh, what Sarah was talking about in terms of the product. Um, you know, it's it's the products that we design or that we intend to put out will be centered around, again, you know, safe, responsible uh, consumer use. And being, again, a, a, a component of this market and of this industry, we intend to, you know, be a hub and source for information that, you know, again, that protects the, the consumer, right? Right. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that you will get into maybe a brick and mortar uh, store? at some point in the future or are you going to keep it online no i mean i think i think whatever would would be within our best interest uh if it is a brick and mortar you know as our company grows and we scale you know that's something to be considered uh or you know even for maybe pivoting into the actual cannabis market you know if there's an opportunity there mm -hmm. by way of success from lot green um then that that would be absolutely something we would do mm -hmm. But right now, e-commerce. <laughs> uh, yes, that's, that's the word right now. Well, we are out of time. Um, how can people find you guys? 
Um, yes, so we can be found on our website, www.lock, L O C K dash green, G R E E N dot com. Uh, we're also very active on social media, on Instagram and Facebook. You can find us at Lock Green Products, one word. Um, we are also on LinkedIn uh, as Lock Green, all capital letters, L O C K G R E E N. Perfect. Well, thank you guys so much for being on the show. Awesome. Thank you, Joey, man. Thank you, Kylie. I really appreciate it. It was no. great talking to you. Speak to you. Thank All right. You. I know that you've got two sizes of boxes. Um, do you yes. have them with you that we can have a quick look at? Yes. Yes. So our um, light green sash boxes come in two sizes. This is a large um, and this is a small. Um, and so I'll give you a quick glimpse at them just really quickly. They're both very similar on the inside, um, but it's a hard outer to protect what's inside. And that is the um, Virginia nice. design. Oh, oh, I like it. that a lot. Yes, but this is to celebrate Virginia being the first state in the South to legalize adult use of cannabis. So you see legalized there, but also in the design we built in um, topics that people care about. So some people care about maybe one of these things and some people care about all of them. So you see social justice, uh, natural medicine, personal freedom and economic opportunity. Those are things that we hear from people all the time that they care about and they really advocate uh, for cannabis legalization. Um, so here, this has our lot green logo down here in a rubber a tag. This is a waterproof zipper. Um, because this this case not only is locking, but it's um, water resistant and smell proof. Mm -hmm. So when you open it up, we have pocket, we have a zippered mesh pocket here. We have um, this little piece right here. I don't know if you can see it, but it has um, these elastic bands. This can have, you know, vape pens, any type of accessories. I have an aunt who uses this um, stash box and she's a diabetic. She puts her insulin needles oh, here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then she puts like her alcohol pads and things, all things related to medical. And then in the bottom, this is where it's slightly different for the large and the small. The small has two dividers. The large has three dividers. Um, there's also additional pocket here and a place for um, a card, which, for example, in my aunt's case, she uses for her medical card. But for maybe a, a cannabis patient may put their cannabis um, okay. card there, the medical card. Um, and... And then it's the lock that can be customized as, as well with the code, your own personal code. Um, so this is um, this is our stash box, um, and the dimensions are on our website, and the directions for um, setting the code are here in our tag. But yeah, this is our lock green stash box. Great. Right. Well, thank you for showing us. Yeah. All right, you've been listening to the Retail This podcast. If you've enjoyed what you heard, you can find more at retailalliance.com slash retail dash is dash podcast or search YouTube for Retail Alliance. I'm Joey Morgan. And I'm Kylie Ross-Seibert. Thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.